Hi folks, I think it's about time we got our teeth stuck into a new project out here in the garden. So stick around and we're going to make a start. You missed out on a lot of the fun already because this was this was kind of up here. This is loads of gravel and render and stuff which we dumped here when we started the renovation and stupidly we should have just got a skip. Uh, but that said, um, once I've got rid of the big stuff, a lot of this will crush down. We're gonna compact it down, but it's all gonna be spread out. And the idea is that we're gonna build a new retaining wall with some oak sleepers, of course. There is no geotextile under here, but it's been here for six years. It's not, there's not gonna be a huge amount of movement. Plus we're probably not gonna do a patio up here. We're actually gonna do a compact self-binding gravel um, simply because it's just a bonus seating area. And it does leave us a future option of decking or patio if we wanted to. But for the time being, we're going simple, we're going low-ish budget. Um, and we're just gonna do what we need to do to get it sorted out. Because this is the last remaining, or one of the last remaining ugly corners of the garden. So because we're five or six steps down from the same level as the skip, I use these buckets from the veg garden and I lift it up, then dump it into the barrow and then I can take it over to the skip. It's just a bit easier that way than trying to ramp up and down and just, you know, it's going to end in a disaster. I'm one for seeing things with my own eyes rather than sketching it all on paper and hoping for the best. So I'm using the hose here to give me an idea of where the lawn is going to finish, where the step's going to be, some heights, distances and that sort of thing. And then I'm going to put in my first corner post and then that's my datum to run everything else off. Our hose here is the hedge line or the border. There's going to be a raised step here, which is one sleeper high. That's roughly the angle we're coming across at. We've got a corner here. And then I just dug in two posts there. I'm going to be putting the posts on the, on the outside of the sleepers because there's going to be a border here. All those posts will be hidden. Right, before we get on and do any more grunt work, um, I'm going to start putting some posts in, run some string lines and get a rough idea of the outline. I've done my really rough version with a hose pipe and some scrap wood. What I want to do is get a string line across. Then when we get to our corner, which we've worked out now and I've dug this hole here, we want to come across at 45 degrees. It could be anything, but 45 is nice and easy and I can uh, set that on the circular saw. And then we'll be doing another 45 at the top corner. probably move this in a minute I'll probably run it beyond that way we're not going to be getting in the way when we actually lay the sleepers and then what I really want to do is get the best 45 well the most the best approximate 45 I can uh, so to do that I'm going to run my string line beyond and then I can lay this and that'll give me a rough uh, kind of line to run the next string line up to the top Right, that's pretty much laid out now. Because we've got this 135 angle, we are going to be losing a little bit more of the lawn up here, which is fine. I'm not too worried about that. Uh, but it means that when we get to here, somewhere in amongst this, we'll turn another 135 or 45 and a cut across at the top. Now, the edge of that square is actually going to be the edge of the lawn. So we need to allow probably 400 mil of garden bed. And that should mean that we come across and hit the post that's going to be in that hole up there. Good, and we'll make sure the tree sedent goes down, we'll stick a bit of gravel on the bottom. These rot out in five years time, it's not the end of the world. They're kind of a temporary measure because like I said, once everything is in, in where it needs to be, the sleepers aren't going anywhere because they, yeah. You know what I'm saying. You've seen the show. Let's get a little bit more depth in there.
All right, so the final little check. So he's going in there. Like so, we've got a decent amount of space, more than we need, around about a third of the hole full of water. I mean, yes, you can stake this up in place. Yes, you can mix it up a barrel of concrete, which is probably more economical. And you know, at the end of the day, these bags are three pound each or something like that. And I've only got two or three little bags here, earth posts here to do it, nothing structural. If I was doing 100 fence space, it might be different. Good. We're two mil off the string, but as long as we do the same up the other end, we're good. Now, while we'll no doubt need to buy some extra plants and shrubs and hedging to fill that border, we've got these crazy lavender bushes, which came from 99p pots at Lidl five years ago, and they just need to be kind of taken out, thinned out a little bit. Uh, there's weeds and all sorts growing in there, so we're taking them out, planting them in buckets, they're going under the willow tunnel to give them a bit of shade because uh, it's been a hot week, keeping them watered and then hopefully we'll be able to transplant them uh, once this sleeper wall is in position and when we're in a better position to kind of not destroy them with the rest of the work that's going on. So whilst I was at it, I took a rough guess at how far I needed to dig out and then I'll come back in and mark and fine tune that line uh, in a little while. Then I was able to drop down from that string line and get the remaining posts in position. Uh, and sure, before you say it, timber and soil, they're gonna rot, I know that. Uh, these are really locating pins for the construction process. They're not really, once, once everything's in place, they're not really needed. But yes, wood, soil will rot. Today's bonus homeschool lesson was tape measure skills and chemical reactions in concrete. There you go, you learn something new every day, girls. It didn't last too long. Next, you guessed it, more digging. Just the last little bit of turf to cut out. Now, if you're doing this in a large area, you can hire a turf cutter. I used one when we did our patio area, and I've got a whole video on that, which we did a good few years ago now, but it's a great tool for just clearing a whole section of lawn before you're installing a deck or a patio. And you can roll it up, and we actually transplanted it further down in the garden. Then I'm just roughing out where the second step is going to be and anywhere I've got a sleeper wall or a step I'm clearing out all of that loose soil, anything that's sat on top and getting down to untouched soil so I've got a good base and foundation to work from. And here's my helping hand at it again. Now before you say it, this step is a little bit backwards. Uh, ideally you want to clear off all your topsoil so you're down to a decent subgrade soil uh, then lay a geotextile like this this is like a taram a non-woven fabric and that goes down it basically supports all of your sub base and i've covered it all in previous patio and path videos but i wanted to get that down and follow it underneath the sleepers so what we're doing here is installing it cutting it around the posts please forgive joe's socks and then uh, we're folding it back on itself and that way you'll see in the later video uh, we'll be able to backfill uh, with some clear clean gravel and keep everything away from the sleepers because what you don't want is soil washing in over time and rotting those sleepers.
Now you can see here I'm going in with some 9mm clean limestone chippings. These are from elsewhere in the garden which we didn't need anymore. Now the reason I'm going with this rather than just putting type 1 in there like a sub base is it's much easier to work with if you're leveling the sleepers you can move it around easier and it compacts down enough to be a decent support. It's also much better at draining and getting water away quickly than type 1 because by the time you've compacted that stuff it's got all the fines and the the silt in it it can remain pretty damp and we don't really want the bottom of these sleepers to rot out anytime soon so completely surrounding the bottom and the side of the retaining wall with clean free draining gravel is the answer And I continue that all around anywhere the sleepers are going to go, around the steps and all the way up to the top. And that's kind of the basics, the boring basics of this project. That's the groundwork done. There'll be much more prep to do where we're going to be putting the type 1 and compacting all that down. But the oaks here, the timbers here, the blood, sweat and tears are ready. And by the time I can get these oak down there, we'll hopefully be ready to build. So. In the next video we will be building rather than digging and hopefully you can tune in for that make sure you subscribe to keep up to date with this whole series it is a big one and um it's going to go on for a good few weeks there's all sorts in there there's metal work and blacksmithing stonework oak sleepers groundworks i've tried to cram in as much as i can so hopefully you're going to enjoy it and hopefully I can keep up to date with the videos. But thank you for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself, and we'll see you next time.